Today's video is lecture 1-2, which will describe some basic concepts in electricity, including voltage, current, power, and energy. At this point, you should have read chapter one of the text, which will also discuss some of these concepts. The definition of voltage is that it is the separation of electrical charge. And whenever a positive and negative charge are separated, energy is expended. So voltage is the energy per unit charge created by the separation. As we've discussed before, the units of volts are for voltage and it's DWDQ, which is joules per coulomb. So a voltage source typically represents the separation in charge by having a positive or a negative. Or if you have a circuit element, we represent the voltage by showing the potential difference with the positive and the negative. The motion of charge creates an electric fluid that we call current. The rate of charge is known as electric current. So I is equal to dq dt, or current in amperes is coulombs per second. We typically represent the flow of current by using an arrow to show the direction. Or if we're talking about a current source, we show the arrow in the source. Okay, let's do an example that demonstrates the relationship between charge and current. The current flowing into the positive terminal of an element is given by the following waveform. If the element is initially charged to two coulombs, what is the total charge transferred to the element in five seconds? Now we know that I is equal to dq dt, but since we're actually looking for charge, what we want to do is to integrate that expression. So Q of T is equal to the integral from zero to T, I d tau plus Q of zero. So one way to do this problem would be to find the equation of each of the lines that makes up this piecewise linear current waveform and then integrate. However, we know that the integral is equal to the area under the curve. So an alternative way to solve this problem would be to find the area of each of the shapes that make up the waveform. So we would find the area of this square, the area of this rectangle, and the area of the triangle on top of the rectangle. So Q of five would be equal to the integral from zero to five, I d tau, plus, since we know the element is initially charged to two coulombs, plus two. So Q of five is equal to, first we'll put the area of the bottom left rectangle, two times one, plus the area of the triangle on top, one half times two times two, plus the area of the square, which is three times three, and then we add the initial charge of two. So the charge transferred to the element in five seconds would be 15 coulombs. Now let's go over some basic definitions. An ideal basic circuit element has three attributes. It only has two terminals. It is described mathematically in terms of current and or voltage, and it cannot be subdivided into other elements. We've already discussed some of these elements, including voltage sources, current sources, resistors, capacitors, and inductors. So here, as we would with all of our circuit elements, we show the current flowing through the element from left to right, and that the voltage across the element has a higher potential on the left with respect to the right. So our next definition is voltage drop. A voltage drop is when current flows through an element from the positive to negative terminal. Otherwise, it is a voltage rise. So the way we have this element drawn here, we would call this a voltage drop. Another example of an element drawn to be a voltage drop would be the following. Why? Because the current is going out of the top, but that means the source of that current had to be down here, which means the current flows from the positive terminal to the negative terminal, so that's also a voltage drop. Now let's look at an example of a voltage rise. I have positive on top, negative on the bottom, 
and here's the current that goes into the negative terminal and exits the element through the positive terminal, this would be a voltage rise. Another example of a voltage rise would be the following. I have a negative on top, positive on bottom for the voltage, and the current I. The current I appears to be exiting the element through the positive terminal, which means it came in at the negative. So those would be examples of voltage rises. The passive sign convention states that when the direction of current flow through an element is in the direction of the voltage drop across the element, use a positive sign that relates the voltage to the current. Otherwise, use a negative sign. So since our first two elements were drawn to be voltage drops, we would say that they do obey the passive sign convention. Since the second two elements were drawn to be voltage rises, we would say that they do not obey the passive sign convention. Now let's try another concept question related to charge and current. The charge flowing through a light bulb is shown in the figure on the right. Which of the following figures shows the current flowing through the bulb? Remember the relationship between charge and current is I is equal to dQ dt. Since we don't have any numbers, we can't actually find the derivative of this piecewise linear function. However, we do know that the derivative of a waveform is equal to the slope of the tangent line. So what we can do is find the approximation of the slope for each of the piecewise linear lines. So we know that this first line has a positive slope, the second line has a negative slope, and the third line has a positive slope. So the answer should be a waveform that shows that same characteristic. Now since this first one has a positive slope for all time, it can't be that one. Since this last one has a positive slope and then a negative slope, however, it does not go back positive, it can't be that one. Therefore, the correct answer should be figure two, which does have a derivative of a positive being the positive slope, then it goes to a negative slope, and then it goes to a positive slope. The next definition will be power. The useful output of electrically based systems often is non-electrical, such as heat or some kind of mechanical system like a fan. This output is expressed in terms of power or energy. Power is the time rate of expending or absorbing energy. So P, which is in watts, is equal to dW dt, where dW is energy and T is time in seconds. So you would say that watts is the same as joules per second. Power associated with the flow of charge follows directly from the definition of voltage and current. Recall that P was equal to dW dT. However, voltage is equal to dW dQ and current is equal to dQ dT. Therefore, when you multiply those two together, you do get power. So the most common definition that we will use for power in this class is V times I, which means that watts is equal to volt amperes. If the current flowing through an element is in the direction of the voltage drop, or if the element obeys the passive sign convention, then we state that the power is equal to positive V times I. Otherwise, we state that the power is equal to negative V times I. Let's look at a couple of examples of that here. If I have five volts across an element and I have the current flowing through the element to be two amps, then power is equal to positive five times two because this element obeys the passive sign convention. However, if I draw an element such that it does not obey the passive sign convention, and make the current flowing through it two amps and the voltage across it five volts, negative on top, positive on the bottom, then that power would be equal to negative five times two, which is negative 10 watts. So if the element obeys the passive sign convention, we put a positive on the power relationship. If it does not obey the passive sign convention, we put a negative on the power relationship. Once you have the numeric value for the power, you can state that if the power is a positive number, then the element is absorbing power. So conversely, if the power is a negative number, then you would say that the element is delivering power. 
So based upon what we've done here, the second element is delivering, and the first element is absorbing. You always have to look at the numeric value in order to determine if the element is delivering or absorbing power. I'll come over here on the other side and show you a couple more examples. Let's say I draw an element to obey the passive sign convention that has a current of two amps and the voltage is negative five volts. Because it obeys the passive sign convention, I use a positive sign on the voltage relationship and I have positive negative five times two, which is negative 10 watts. So you would say that this element is delivering power. There are two ways to state that an element is delivering power. Either you tell me it's negative 10 watts, which means 10 watts delivered, or you put 10 watts delivering. You never want to put negative 10 watts delivering because that means absorbed. The law of conservation of energy states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, only transferred. Therefore, the total power delivered to an electric circuit must be equal to the total power absorbed. Once we start doing circuit analysis, you will see that we use this law frequently in order to check our work. If we get answers for voltage and current and power for a circuit and it does not obey the law of conservation of energy, we know that we've made a mistake somewhere. Now let's look at an example from the FE review manual that actually addresses voltage, current, power, energy, and resistance. A 5 ohm resistor is placed in series with a varying current given by the following waveform. Most nearly how much energy is dissipated by the resistor over the 4 second time interval shown. So the first thing we have to do is given current and resistance is find voltage. This is actually Ohm's law, which we talked about a little bit in lecture 1-1. So since voltage is equal to current times resistance, what we can do is create a rough sketch of the voltage, knowing that the resistance is 5 ohms, as follows. If the current is 2 amps, 2 times 5 is 10 volts. So the curve starts at 10, and then at 2 seconds, it jumps up to 5 times 4, which is 20 volts. And then it drops back to 0 at 4 seconds. If we want to find the power waveform, we can multiply the voltage and the current together. So if we make a rough sketch of what that looks like, it will have the same shape where it jumps up at time equals two seconds and drops back down at four. And 10 times two is 20 watts. And 20 times four is 80 watts. Remember energy, W of T, is equal to the integral from zero to T, P D tau, plus W of zero. Since resistors cannot store energy, W of zero is zero. And recall that the integral of a waveform is the same as the area under the curve, so we can use the area again. So the energy at five seconds should be two times 20 for the area of the first rectangle, plus two times 80 for the area of the second rectangle. 40 plus 160 is equal to 200 joules. So the energy from zero to five seconds is 200 joules or letter C. Now let's look at our final example for this lecture which examines the law of conservation of energy. So we have a network here that's made of several circuit elements and all of them have been labeled with their voltage and their current values. So the first thing says, identify which elements are drawn to obey the passive sign convention. Remember, if an element obeys the passive sign convention, then it's drawn such that it is a voltage drop 
which means the current flows from the positive to the negative terminal through the element. So if we look at element A, the current flows from the negative to the positive, so it does not obey the passive sign convention. If we look at element B, the current does flow from the positive to the negative, so we would say that element B is our first element that obeys the passive sign convention. Element C, the current also flows from the negative to the positive, which means it does not obey the passive sign convention. Element D, the current flows from the negative to the positive, so it does not obey the passive sign convention. Element E, the current does flow into the positive and out of the negative, therefore it obeys the passive sign convention, so we'll write that here as well. And finally, element F. Element F, the current flows from the negative to the positive terminal, so it does not obey the passive sign convention. Recall that when an element obeys the passive sign convention, we write the power relationship as PB equals the positive VB times IB. And since E also obeys, we write PE equals positive VE times IE. So since the power for B is two times one third, that would be two over three watts. For E, that would be positive negative 13 times negative 13 over three, which equals positive 169 over three watts. So all of our elements that did not obey the passive sign convention, we'll write them here. That would be A, C, D, and F. The power for A gets a negative sign because it did not obey. So that's negative VA times IA, or negative, negative six times one, which is positive six watts. For C, that would be negative VC times IC, which is negative, negative eight times four, which is positive 32 watts. Element D, PD is equal to negative VD times ID, which is negative 15 times negative two thirds, or positive 10 watts. And finally, element F, PF is equal to negative VF times IF, which is negative 21 times phi, which equals negative 105 watts. The way that we show that a circuit obeys the law of conservation of energy is we make a power table. And I will show you an example of this now. So if we put the circuit elements on the table, A, B, C, D, E, and F, and we put the power in watts, recall that all of the positive numeric values for power are absorbing, and all of the negative numeric values for power are delivering. So since everything was positive except for element F, elements A through E are absorbing power and element F is delivering power. So if I put the powers on the power table, I'll have six watts for A, two over three watts for B, 32 watts for C, 10 watts for D, and 169 over three watts for E, and negative 105 watts for F. So if I sum up the absorbed and delivered power, it should equal zero. If that happens, we can say that this circuit obeys the law of conservation of energy. This concludes lecture 1-2.